Our top focus as of now, Shiite Muslim cleric Muqtada al-Sadr's party, as per initial results in Iraq's parliamentary polls, is being seen as the biggest winner. The cleric supporters, Sadrists, were seen taking to Baghdad's Tahrir Square, setting off fireworks, playing music and waving the Sadrist movement flags. A count based on initial results from several provinces, plus the capital Baghdad, verified by local government officials, suggested that Sadr had won more than 70 seats which, if confirmed, could give him considerable influence in forming a government. The results of the Iraqi election lean heavily in favor of the Shiite cleric. Bound to increase the number of seats he holds in parliament, former Prime Minister Nouri al-Maliki looked set to have the next largest win among Shiite parties. The October 10th election was held several months early in response to mass protests in 2019 that toppled the government and showed widespread anger against political leaders who many Iraqis say have enriched themselves at the expense of the country. But a record low turnout suggested that a vote billed as a chance to wrest control from the ruling elite would do little to dislodge sectarian religious parties in office since 2003. Iraq's Shiite groups have dominated governments and even government formation since the U.S.-led invasion of 2003 that toppled Sunni dictator Saddam Hussein and catapulted the Shiite majority and the Kurds to power. However, Sadr's group is one of several that would have to enter negotiations to form a coalition capable of dominating parliament and heading an administration. A period of jockeying for positions that may take weeks or longer Sadr broadcast a live speech on state TV, claiming victory already and promising a nationalist government free of foreign interference. He broadcast a live speech on state TV, claiming victory. Listen in. ما لم تتدخل في الشأن العراقي وتشكيل الحكومة وأي تدخل فسيكون لنا رد دبلوماسي أو لعله شعبي يليق بالجرم فالعراق للعراقيين فقط فالعراق للعراقيين فقط Sadr has increased his control over the Iraqi state since coming first in the 2018 election where his coalition won 54 seats. The unpredictable populist cleric has been a dominant figure and often the kingmaker in Iraqi politics since the U.S. invasion. Iraq has held five parliamentary elections since the fall of Saddam. Rampant sectarian violence unleashed during the U.S. occupation has abated and Islamic State fighters who seized a third of the country in 2014 were defeated in 2017. But many Iraqis say that their lives have yet to improve. Infrastructure lies in disrepair and healthcare, education and electricity are inadequate in the country as of now. Now for a better understanding about the political landscape and what lies ahead in Iraq, senior journalist Havar Ali is now joining us live from Erbil in Iraq. Thanks so much for joining us, Havar. Now, as we know, Shia Muslim leader Muqtada al-Sadr's party is set to be the biggest winner in Iraq's parliamentary election. This, of course, comes amid a record low voter turnout. So give us a sense of the mood in Iraq as of now and what does this mean for the country ahead? Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Well, uh, as you said, uh, uh, the election went well and positive, positively without any uh, tensions or conflicts. Uh, but uh, it was a low turnout, it was uh, the, the most low turnout uh, election in uh, Iraq since 2003. It was uh, as the commission, Iraqi uh, High Commi uh, Election Commission said, was uh, 41%, which is very low especially among the youth who were, uh, as you know, this election came up after uh, the mass protest of 2019, uh, when a lot of youth uh, angry with the elites, especially in Baghdad, uh, called for change of the government. And this election uh, proved that they still uh, don't trust the political parties, uh, especially the 
uh, those who's running the country in Baghdad. But the, uh, as always, the election came and the result, the irregular results suggest that the, the old and the big uh, parties won, uh, especially uh, the Southern, uh, Southern Movement with 73 seats, as reported by the commission. Uh, so most of the old faces will return. Uh, and uh, as was expected, not a lot of change will happen after the election with the big parties winning. But the only change uh, this election ha happened was uh, most of the pro-Iranian groups and uh, parties got uh, low votes. And even though uh, they participate in it, but they didn't get a lot of votes like the uh, past elections. Right. Uh, however, you just mentioned the 2019 protests, of course, and there has been a lot of talk about the mass protests in 2019, which toppled the government then. Will this election, however, deliver on the promises that were made to young Iraqis? Uh, that's still to, to be seen. Uh, personally, I'm not that uh, uh, positive. Uh, I think, uh, as I said the other day uh, to your TV as well, I, I don't think the election will change a lot of uh, political landscape in Iraq. Uh, as the results suggest, most of the old, the old and the classic uh, or big parties won, so that the same uh, policies will return in Baghdad. Uh, uh, but uh, some of the independent uh, candidate won, which is uh, the ch that that's the change. But uh, uh, it's not that the big a big number that will uh, make it or should or will that make or force the government to change its policies or uh, provide most of the uh, services to the uh, people that were angry with the, uh, the government or called for the changes. Havar Ali, thank you so much for all those updates and thank you for joining us from Iraq. Beyond World is One is now available in your country. Download the app now and get all the news updates on the move.